All right, guys, let's talk about some uh, turns in, two turns away, okay? Um, probably what's the most scary maneuver you guys can do? Turns into? Two turns into. Right? Because, oh my god, it's going to hit me, right? Okay. <laughs> so, you remember we just talked about, hey, using that peripheral vision, you had your fingertips out, right? Remember that as dash two here, you can see your wingtips in your peripheral vision as you're looking at the lead, right? Yes. And so, what am I telling you to do? I'm telling you to watch this exhaust stack here. And that's really about it. This is a technique, but if you do this, watch just the exhaust stack, and now all you have to do is match this angle of bank. But well, let's talk about one other thing you need to do, and that is adjust your power, okay? So, if I match this angle of bank, I want you to notice the altitude of wing in relation to lead. Lead is just gonna rotate about its own axis, right? Yes. Well, what's dash two have to have? In relation to the table, you can see his altitude. As wing rotates, dash two has to what? Come down. He has to come down into a hole, right? Yes. So if you're doing that, what does that tell you you need to do? Pull some power. You got to pull power because if you don't, you're gonna speed up, right? Okay. So this is what I'm gonna tell you how you know uh, he'll find the there, right? Yes. So this is what you're gonna hear me say. I say all you're gonna do is you're gonna as he rotates, you're gonna just pull power at the rate he's rotating. Keep watching the exhaust act the whole time. Watch the exhaust act the whole time. It just matches angle of bank. That's all you're doing. Matches angle of bank coming down, 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 down. Once rotation stops, reset power. Okay? So now what happens then if I'm down in the hole, what happens if lead rolls out? What do I need to do? I need to add some power. I gotta add power and come up out of the hole, right? So all I'm doing is, hey, I'm, I'm watching all I'm doing again is watching this exhaust act. His wings are in my peripheral vision, as you guys have just seen. Right? Hey, I'm going to add power, come up out of the hole to, to match that. And as soon as this rotation stops, I'm going to reset power, right? Because all I'm doing is I have to, obviously, it's Sir Isaac Newton says, right? This one. I'm in a hole, i got to come up, i got to add power to get out of the hole, right? But once I'm out of the hole, I can reset. Let's talk about turns away. Okay, so here we are in a turns away position here, right? He starts rolling away from me, what do I need to do? VMC. Add power. You need to add power, right? So here's the thing that's kind of neat about VMC turns away. Your elevator is going to control your altitude, right? So the elevator is going to control his belly on the horizon. Here's his horizon over here. The elevator is going to control the belly. Power is going to control the UHF antenna on the cutout. As you can see, here's the UHF antenna here. And all we're doing is just rotating around lead, right? That makes sense. So if I'm sucked, right, you can see the UHF antenna. This is the UHF antenna, here's the line here. And all I'm doing is rotating around. So in the turns away, when I increase power, when its rotation stops and reset, elevator controls the belly, that makes sense. Power, as long as I stay in my lane, controls the UHF antenna over the cutout. Or the CFA store on the trailing edge of the wing. Okay? That makes sense? Yes, and Billy, you're gonna see that a lot today as well. Okay. Again, as he rolls out, right, I'm on the outside of his turns, so and therefore I'm eating up more space and having to use more power. As he roll out, rolls out, what? I'm going to match his angle bank, pull in power, but once that rotation stops, it just reset power. Okay. So what's the difference between this and an IMC turn, uh, an IMC turns away versus VMC, right? I had to add power here to roll into it, right? Mm -hmm. The difference is now, on an IMC, I'm actually having to come up out of my hole. I gotta get on top of him, therefore I have to what? Just add more power. power. Maintaining those checkpoints, right? And then as it rolls out, hey, I've got to get back in the hole. I have to pull more power to get back in position. Again, once that rotation stops for really the right? What am I trying to do is get you to use your peripheral vision, which puts more data into your brain to make a better uh, maneuver, right? But it's funny, even though I'm giving you more data, you're not really having to think about it. It's kind of subliminal, which is a nice part of that. So you guys aren't really thinking, you're just, hey, matching the angle bank, it's the power play coming up or down or whatever. Okay. Any questions on that? Kind of how you need to do your power, you can have a chance, have a chance to see that a little bit more soon. Let's talk about BNRs, right? Um, here we are, your lead, right? You're going to do what? What's that signal going to look like for your lead and you're going to do a BNR? Which side is he on? Oh, he's on the bottom lead. Well, right there. Oh, right there. Yeah, so I'm going to clear the area. Yeah. Look. One, two, three. Yep. Down. Over. Big nod. Yep. And then kiss off. Kiss him off. PCL. Nice. 
max power and boom, you're in cutaway. So as lead, okay, I want you to think about this. Right now, if you're wings level, percentage-wise, how much lift do you have? Uh, right now, sir. Oh. You have 100%, right? How much do you have here? Zero, sir. Zero, right? So as you do a BNR, right, we tell you, hey, pull for 200 knots, right? Yes. But what really controls your altitude? It's your angle bank. It's your angle bank, right? Because if I pull here, I'm going to slice down, right? If I don't have enough, I'm going to pull up. Yes. Right? So as a BNR, as lead, angle bank controls altitude, pull controls air speed. Makes sense? Yes. Because all it is is we're changing our lift factor. If I go like this, I can pull to infinity, I'm coming down. You know, if I take it out, I'm going to come up. Yes. The back stick keeps the air speed. Okay? All right, cool. So, hey, he pulls, right? Three seconds later, you see it. Always keep eyes on lead, right? Yep. You can pull with him, right? I like to keep him, here's your canopy bow right here. I like to keep him just above your canopy bow. So, as he pulls, hey, great. I'm going to follow him. Keep eyes on. It's like a dog fight, man. Go get it. That's what you hear him say. Yep. Go get it. <laughs> All right, boom. It's a dog fight. I'm coming, coming, coming. Keeping him in that canopy bow. Boom. We pull out there, right? Now, I want you as dash two to kind of keep put this vertical stab, put him, put that right on the horizon. So now you're just above him, right? And you're in trail, right? And so as dash two, I don't want you to say you're ready until you are 200 knots, about 54% torque, mm -hmm. and you've got him just just below the horizon, right? That tail just below the horizon. Okay. All right. Why is that important? Because as lead, you should be doing what? 200 knots and whatever out to you roll out at, right? Yes. So now what? We're both on the same contract. Make sense? Then you would say Lancer 2 ready. He does his 45, 30. He's going to do this. Wait till what? He gets outside of the HUD. Then you're going to start moving inside. Make sense? Yes, sir. All right. So let's talk about that. What would a, what's the checkpoint we're using on lead here then? to maintain this bearing line that we need to have for the joint. Uh, I think stab on the other. Yeah, on the that vertical wing. stab on the outside wing, right? Mm -hmm. So hey, we're gonna pull in. Am I touching my power to join? Okay. No, it's, a, it's a basically, we're just using radius of turn, right? So what am I doing? It's just a wing dance, right? So hey, if the stabs, we talk about, hey, stick the stab, if the stab's to the left, it means you need to come left to align the stab. And it's really all we're doing is we're moving this bearing line Based upon if I'm behind him, you can see this line is here to the left. If I move out here, more beside him, it's going to shift right. Stab to the left, turn left. Stab to the right, turn right. Well, guess what? I'm not very smart, man. I was a little Marine. Right? So you are a Marine. You know this. Sir. All right. So if I can't figure out which one it goes, hey, I'll just go right. Oh, that's not the way to go. I'll just go left. Don't put a lot of brake power. Okay? That's what I'm getting. So all I'm doing is this. I'm just wagging my wings in here, wagging the voice left, right, left, right, 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 until what? One to shoot, one to two ship lengths. Okay. If I'm coming in pretty quick, I'm gonna start coming down to the V at two. If I'm coming in really slow, I'm gonna get closer, and then I'm gonna come down. Why do I want to do that? It's really I want to control this nose to tail distance here. Okay. So if I'm coming in really quick, I'll just slide right in sooner. Until what? I want to get both these exhaust stacks from underneath. Right. So I'm coming in, coming in, come down until I see both exhaust stacks from underneath. Right? Well, wait a minute. Now I'm in this position, right? One to two ship links, came down, boom, took it out, come down underneath, got both exhaust stacks from underneath here. Where am I at now? Uh, well, you're in a slightly dangerous position being very below. You're not in a dangerous position, but what you really are in is a sucked, turns away position. Mm -hmm. Okay? So all I'm going to do is take out my angle bank, and what we talked about turns away, elevator controls the belly. Power controls the UHF, so the second I come out, elevator controls the belly, I'm going to pull that belly up, and then power controls that UHF antenna, so then come up, out, and then we can pull it. Okay? Yes, sir. Makes sense? So, clear as mud? <laughs> yes, right. Sir. It'll be more clear once you get in there. Now, what is the, other than hitting lead, which we are not allowed to do, right? <clears throat> what is the worst thing then that can happen in doing a BNR? It's an underrun. All right, and the four times I would do an underrun are excessive closure, getting excessively acute, meaning we're gonna take lead, I'm acute in close, or I just don't feel comfortable. Yeah, I don't like it, I'm gonna do an underrun. 
you know, always heard in our briefs, wave offs are free. Well, guess what else is free? Under -runs. Under runs are free, right? Wave offs are free and under runs are free, right? Hey, all it is, hey, I don't like it, I'm coming in, coming in too fast, lower, level, idle. But as soon as I cross under and leave 6 o'clock, I want to match his angle of bank, okay? And I might still have that. Cross under 6, max his angle of bank. Guess what? I'm outside his radius of turn. Now, if I'm still going forward, okay, you can use speed records. If I'm still going forward, I can take that angle of bank out. So continue that and then come back in, <clears throat> okay? Because we obviously can never take lead. If I take out the angle of bank, we're not going to take lead. Yes, okay. Lower level idle, hey, Lancer 2 underrun, and then what? Join back up on that side. So why am I telling you that underruns are, are free and not to worry about it? Just because a lot of guys say, hey, I'm going to be in, or I'm afraid to get close, I'm afraid to get close, and they'll do this, and I'm going to try to pull away. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, the purpose is to join, right? Well, if underruns are free, and that's the worst thing that can happen, then I'll always do this if you don't like it, just do an underrun. Get on the guys outside and get the flight going. A lot, the worst thing you can do is do this. Pull up so hard. Now, can you as NAS wing see lead at this point? Negative. No, right? So that's dangerous, right? I can't see him, but lead still thinks he has the lead. It's not part of the contract. What is an underrun really doing? It's allowing this canopy here to always face lead. If the canopy's facing lead, I can always see lead, therefore it's Right? That's why we do an underrun. Canopy's always facing lead. I can always see him. Hey, I'm underrun. Do whatever I gotta do. Um, any questions on, you know, turns in, two turns away? Any questions about underruns, being honest, okay? Last thing I'm going to talk about is that three-part power correction, okay? Just say if you're getting sucked or acute, right? So here we are uh, flying along today. Um, we talked about, you know, you had your nose here, right? You know, here's your, here's your nose, here's your wing. And you know that lead is now in that 45 off of it, right? We talked about, hey, if he's closer to my wing, I'm acute. If he's closer to my nose, I'm sucked, right? Okay, and you guys have had a chance to play the three-part power correction. I just want to talk about this real quick. I am sucked here, right? Yes, sir. What do I need to do with my controls now to get back into position? Add power. Add power and pitch down ever so slightly. Yeah, add power. Maybe pitch down, maybe not, you know, depending on if I got stepped down correctly. Not. I'm going to add power, but as I'm coming closer, what do I need to do now? Full power. Yeah, you need to anticipate catching that position. Because I can't just add power, go, 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 and slam on brakes and stop, right? I don't have brakes. So therefore, as I'm coming forward, I'm adding power. I'm coming forward, 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 and then anticipating catching that checkpoint. So I'm now starting to what? Pull back until all of a sudden the plane stops. Now, once the plane stops, do I need to do anything else? Uh, reset power. I gotta reset power, right? Because if I just pull that power back and slow me down, and then I leave that power out, what's gonna happen next? We start falling back, right? Say so I'm gonna add power, anticipate catching my checkpoints, smoothly pulling power back. Once the lead's motion stops in relation to you, that's when I gotta do that last correction, right? To stay in that position. Makes sense. You guys have had a chance to see it. You're gonna definitely get, have a chance to hear that again today. Okay. So don't forget that three-part power correction. The problem we have with a lot of guys is, hey, they add power, they anticipate, they pull that power out. Hey, I got here, and then they don't do that last reset, and they keep coming back. And now we're playing the yo-yo game. Yes. Okay. Oh, there's one more thing I do want to talk to you about real quick, and that is the cross under, okay? As you're looking at lead, right, you know you know the normal parade position here, we're in parade, that's where you should start, right? You reach up and hands over the outboard. Cut out, okay? And you're going to slide back until when? Ventral fin. Yeah, well, not the ventral fin. The UHF antenna is where? Uh, across on So the dihedral, right? It's in that little angle of the wing. You see the wing kind of angles up, you know, from the bottom. So you're pulling back to the dihedral. Guys, that's very, not a very big distance at all. All we're trying to do is, hey, we're more beside him. We're getting back to where the prop is just after the tail, okay? Now, how am I going to do a cross under? Am I going to increase my angle bank and start turning like this? No, I don't, right? So I want to increase my angle bank, and I want to really just change my heading. You'll notice it will be wings level coming across. Now, notice here that my right wing here is out more leads left, okay? The UHF antenna is in the dihedral. So what a lot of guys do is they'll come across and they'll stop at the six or stop at the other wing tip. But really what you need to do is come all the way across and just your hands here. 
come all the way across till one wingtip is out where we are. If anything, exaggerate across under your how far you need to go, and you'll find out that you're actually going to struggle. Okay? As you do it, what's the number one checkpoint you should always have for safety? Exhaust stack. Exhaust stack on the leading edge of the wing for step down, right? So I like to put a little bit of air on the exhaust stack, change my heading. My wings are level, and I'm just coming across, wing bump. Wings the level again, keeping the exhaust sack, and then come back up. Okay? Why are we teaching this stuff? Well, you guys have a lot of experience and know exactly where to kind of do that. You know? If you don't, a lot of guys will come across and then they'll wing it and then they'll start pulling back down, yeah, right? So, what am I doing? I'm telling you to change heading, come across, change heading, stop, and make it back on. It's just easier, right? As you gain more experience, then yeah, you can flip it over there. You're not going to have a chance to do it five times. Okay? <laughs> just let you know that. All right? But, uh, so I just want to show you the problem. Why am I showing you this stuff, A, in the brief, so you understand what I'm saying in the plane, and B, to give you some techniques. Now, after today's flight, we're going to come back, and I'm going to show you now, after today's flight, how to practice on the ground for flying formation in the air. Not just, you guys have been probably practicing in the parking lot or whatever you've been doing with your techniques, your procedures, right? Hey, I got that. There's things you also can do individually about, okay, how do I practice on the ground? I can't be in the plane. I can't do a form sim. I can't do all that stuff. What can I do to become a better form pilot on the ground? We'll, so we'll do that as part of the debrief. Okay. So, you guys have any questions about what we're going to do? No, sir. Nope. Just uh, one question. Um, sure. Kind of the difference between um, when you're coming in after the BNR and you're crossing under versus the under run when you're crossing in. Is it just the under run is just more of an abrupt? Come under, or well, it's like a, an under run is kind of like an ugly baby, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, you know, you recognize it early, so go ahead and execute early. It's lower level idle, come across, but again, yeah, you're not going to join right back up immediately. You're going to get some space out here, right? Whereas the B and R, you're controlled, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, what can cause an under run? Well, lead, not keeping the contract. That's number one thing. We have ways of breaking our contract. We do want to see an under run. We want to see we have that judgment. Um, so the difference is, yeah, you're kind of doing a lot of the same, in a sense, maneuvers. You're coming down, you know, coming into the V or whatever. But the difference is, of course, is that it's just coming too fast. You need to build that space, right, to get away, hey, let everything get stable and come back in. Whereas, whereas it's a normal B and R, hey, everything's controlled, come down to the V, I got the exhaust stacks and come out. Right now, when I first have you fly today, I just want to make sure you can come in here, come down. I'm going to have you stop here, and then I'm going to have you from here come back out the outside because I need to see that you're stable, right? Mm -hmm. But if you show me more proficiency, I'm going to let you kind of come in, slide down, kiss the exhaust axle, and come up the other side. Why am I allowing you to do that? It's because now you have already demonstrated to me that you have the ability to stop at any point. That's control, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have the ability to stop, I'm worried you might do that. But if I know you can come down in here, stop, and do this, then I'll say, okay, come down, see the exhaust axis, slide up the other side. Because the second you come down from the V and you're here, you're in a suck turns away position, you come out, the elevator controls that belly again, power controls the UHF antenna, and so you can just slide down, yeah, I got it, and you come up the other side, boom. And you're ready to go, we're ready to continue on. Makes sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Does that answer your question? Yes. Anything else? Any other questions? All right, guys. Let's go ahead and fly, and uh, after that, we'll come back and do a quick review.